It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, chief investment officer, and above all, my father. Good morning, Big Bob Payne. How are you, Dad? Hey, good morning, Ryan. I uh, hope you're shaking. enjoying this fabulous fall weather, the first weekend in November. How oh, man, how time flies. I know. I mean, can't believe uh, Halloween is behind us. Did you go out uh, trick-or-treating this year down in uh, Naples, Florida, Bob? Yeah, you know, I did, Rye. I combed my hair in the opposite direction. Nobody knew who I was. <laughs> That's a lot of hair to comb. <laughs> well, speaking of Halloween, Bob, this year, you had to take a wild guess. How much do you think Americans spent on uh, Halloween treats? Well, you would think that uh, with all the healthy eating that's promoted every day, that people would be cutting back on refined sugar. But my guess is that it's in the billions. You're right. $2.7 billion this year on holiday treats, which is actually a 4% rise from a year ago, which is unbelievable. And then when you factor in costumes, it's a $9.1 billion industry. So second only to Christmas in terms of uh, actual sales. Pretty wild. Well, speaking of Halloween, Fry, what is your favorite treat? If you had a end of days, uh, had to pick one treat to get on a trick or treating night, what would it be? Oh, now it was always Reese's uh, peanut butter cups. Chocolate and peanut oh, butter is the way Especially to my put heart. Put them in the freezer. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so you know what to get me next year. We have a great show this morning. Or a very exciting show to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about financial insecurity. Are you afraid to find out if you can actually retire? What excuses are you making to avoid dealing with creating a retirement plan for yourself? Bob and I are going to discuss how to stop avoiding and start addressing all your financial insecurities. We're going to talk about mutual funds. They're an old school investment that you should or shouldn't have in your portfolio. Well, Bob and I are going to break down the current investment landscape and discuss is there really any value left in owning mutual funds as part of your portfolio. Along with this week's financial pornography, we're going to talk about what was out there in the media that you need to avoid. And it's going to be an all pain, no pain, no gain show. We have our financial advisor, Chris Payne, my brother, Bob's son, coming on the show for our spotlight segment where we're going to discuss a real retirement plan. And we're going to highlight some of the flaws or mistakes you need to avoid with your planning. So let's get right down to it. Let's talk about these financial insecurities or defense mechanisms. You might be saying to yourself, you know, I don't want to retire to compensate for the fact that you don't really know if you actually can retire. Bob, let's explore some of the possible meanings behind the statement, I don't want to retire. And I think one of the biggest statements that we'll hear is I don't have enough money to retire. Well, you know what that statement really screams out and says, Rye, is I haven't done any planning, so I don't have a down payment on a clue whether I have enough money or not. And I think that's the biggest fear all baby boomers, all potential retirees have is, you know, what happens if I run out of money? Will I become a burden on my children? Will I be a bag lady? Will I be a street person? That's one of the scariest thoughts there is. And it it all comes from not taking the time to do a plan. I mean, how many times have you had people come in and say, hey, I don't want to be a bag lady. I don't want to live in the street. But, you know, I have no idea where to start. Well, I think it, it is overwhelming because you may have statements in all different places. You may have different brokers out there that have sold you all these products. And you have this amalgamation of things that are out there. And it seems very vague and very nebulous that you have all this stuff. So to really bring it down to the basic level and start to really look at these things, I will say surprisingly, and we probably meet with maybe 50 people a month, so we see a lot, a lot of retirement plans or a lot of savings plans, you're probably a lot better off than you think you are. I I would say that's probably one of the more common things is as bad as you think it is, it's probably not that bad. So it is worth to start that planning process, which in my mind, Bob, that means gathering all those statements that come monthly. Well, see, that's a problem, right? When you don't know, and I find that uh, you know the majority of people that we meet with are taking way more risk 
in their portfolio strategy than they need to because they're not able to factor in their passive income streams or look at what happens once you downsize when you're in retirement. A lot of people don't realize that uh, they may have enough in assets, enough in passive income streams, you know, to not only retire, but retire comfortably. And as a result, since they're not certain, they're afraid to make a mistake and they tend to make mistakes on the aggressive side. And that is really all well and good when the market's going up like it is right now. But when you have a corrective event like you did in 2008 or 2000 or 19 or Black Monday back in 1987, this is when people destroy their financial life. And this is why it's so critical, you know, to really take the time and have someone run a wealth projection. Yeah, I mean, I would actually go a step further there, Bob. I mean, I think number one, yes, your fear could be, you know, maybe the market is complacency where you are taking too much risk. And that, I think back of your mind, you know you're taking too much risk, but when that market's going up, it's kind of like the old mentality is if it ain't broke, don't fix it, which is mm -hmm. a bad mentality to have because really when the market does finally pull back, you're going to be basically uh, caught with your you know proverbial pants down. Uh, on the other side of it is I think there's a great fear of the markets in general where you're still burnt from 2008, you know, 2008 backlash where you saw the market really, really take a big hit and you have too much money sitting in cash earning nothing right now. And it's very intimidating with markets at all time highs. If interest rates go up, that could be bad for bond prices. I think it's just very nerve wracking to even put your toe in the water and start to put some of that cash to work because that's the other extreme. Well, the other stream in my mind is the people that think I have way more money than I need and haven't factored in inflation. So they don't know, you know, what the cost of living looks like, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now. Or, you know, they forget that uh, the house is aging like they are. Next thing you know, you got to put a new air conditioner in a new roof, you know, a new heating system, new pool pump. And then there's the cost of health care, which is skyrocketing. And it's just um, it's just a number that most people don't account for. But we're going to all spend about a quarter million dollars on health care that's not in most people's plans. So it's so important to sit down, put pen to paper, you know, have a wealth projection done, you know, have inflation calculated, have your taxes reviewed to make sure that you can get from point A to point B, not just next year, but every year for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think it does sound overwhelming when you start talking about, OK, so now what do I take Social Security? What about health care costs I'm going to have? So I think we got to start with the basics. And if mm -hmm. you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need to get a plan started, the best place to start, like I just said, was get all of your statements, put them together. And if you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we will start that process for you. We will get you financially organized. If you bring all your statements in, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll take all those statements. We'll put them together. We will build you your own personalized portal so we can look at everything in one place. So not everything's scattered around. So your spouse knows where things are. Then we can properly analyze everything you have and start to model out a real plan for you. And then we're going to look at all the investments you have. We're going to plot it on a simple three-page document our investment analysis spreadsheet, and we'll determine number one, how much cash flow or income is your portfolio producing? Income is so critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. Fees are important. You're probably being overcharged on your investments. We're going to break down all the cost in your portfolio, including all that hidden cost on mutual funds, insurance products that you own, and help you to reduce or optimize the cost on your portfolio. And then we're going to look at diversification. Is your money properly spread out? Are you protected if the market pulls back? We're going to show you and find the pitfalls in your portfolio so you're not caught off guard after the next market correction. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, put everything together into our pain capital management portal so that we can determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies we've literally worked on for 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So today's the day to get financially organized. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over 200000 saved for retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call at 844 
Plan NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. This is my son, Ryan Payne. We are no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. This is your weekly market update with Ryan Payne filling in for Bob this week. We had yet another week of market highs on the street of dreams as this bull market continues to inch higher and higher week after week. On Friday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that the U.S. created 261,000 jobs in October, although the expectation was 310,000, Unemployment in the U.S. is now at the super low rate of 4.1%, the lowest since the year 2000, almost 20 years. There was a lot of big news out of Washington this week with President Trump nominating Jerome Powell to replace Janet Yellen as the head of the Federal Reserve, perceived as a Wall Street-friendly move, with Powell expected to follow current policy of raising short-term rates and slowly unwinding quantitative easing. The GOP also unveiled their Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, proposing to lower the corporate tax rate to 20%, gave big multinational companies a one-time tax rate of 12% on the cash that's repatriated from overseas. Tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle combined have nearly $500 billion in cash and cash equivalents held overseas, according to the most recent regulatory filings. The bill aims also to trim down income tax brackets to four from seven, the top rate being 39.6%. The GOP is also proposing a cap on mortgage deductions, the elimination of state and local tax deductions, a repeal of the AMT and estate tax, a repeal on deductions, a repeal on the deduction of alimony, student loan interest, and tax preparation. But keep in mind, every line in the tax code has a constituency, and they vote and they're already campaigning to protect those deductions. However, for now, the market gives the plan two thumbs up. And if you aren't being given a financial plan that takes into account tax reform, the current global economic growth, give us a call so we can create for you your own 360 financial portal to address every facet of your financial life at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Again, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place... You should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I's goal at Payne Capital Management and No Pain, No Gain Radio is education. We just want to make sure you're making the best decisions about your finance. There's so much noise, so much information out there. We like to cut through all the noise and give you practical advice based on our 40 years of experience. And to help you do that, we put together our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you'd like to access our newest guide for free, simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can access Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? Find out everything you can to avoid taxes at 555-888. Text the word BULLISH. In this segment, we want to talk about an old school investment called a mutual fund. And you might most likely have a lot of mutual funds in your portfolio. And it's probably one of the most popular way for us to invest, really, But the landscape's changed a lot over the course of the last two decades. And because of that, we wanted to discuss the relevance of a mutual fund in today's really investment environment. You know, Bob, what percentage of your clients 
owned mutual funds in one form or another when they first came to see you? Well, in most cases, Rye, it's close to 90% of the portfolio was in mutual wow. funds because that really was the vehicle that most investment advisors, stockbrokers, insurance people use, you know, to build portfolios and have used, you know, over my career. But the biggest reason are wholesalers. You know what a wholesaler is? It's someone who basically sells mutual funds on behalf of a mutual fund company. So it's kind of like the car salesman who sells you the, the car, but for mutual funds. Yeah. Now, how many car salesmen or how many wholesalers have you met for individual stocks or individual bonds or index funds? Zero point uh, zero because there's no real cost or very low cost, but it's, so they can't really afford to hire a sales team like you can for a mutual fund, an expensive mutual See, that's fund. That's one of the big reasons why mutual funds can't beat their underlying index is because they have so much overhead. You know, they got uh, salespeople out there selling salespeople on why they should sell their mutual fund. Then you have a manager who manages that sales force. Then you have a manager who manages the manager. Then you have a district director who manages the manager who manages the manager who manages the salesman. You know, it sounds <laughs> like layer and layer and layer of cost, which of course is paid by the investor. So what we found over the last 60 years is that uh, when you peel away all the costs, the performance of that mutual fund is usually negative relative to all the less expensive options available. Right. And you might be asking yourself, you know, what is an expense ratio in a mutual fund and why is that important to understand? Why it's really important to understand is because that's the expense or that's what it's going to cost you to own that mutual fund annually. Now, the trick here is just like a lot of financial products, is you can't see that fee coming out. So you can't go on your statement and look for a line item, seeing what the cost is. And you know, you most likely, or you might think, well, I'm not really paying anything. I don't see any fees coming out. Well, that's not true. <laughs> and the reason why they have these huge sales forces is because there is underlying cost. And a lot of times the only place to find that is like the hundredth page of that prospectus they send you in the mail. I always get offended because I am thinking, look at all those trees. They're being cut down to, to build these prospectuses. <laughs> so it's important to know or have someone find out for you what the real underlying costs are in all those mutual funds that you own. Well, it's not just the cost of the mutual fund, Rye. You have, you know, you have the manager's fee. Then you know they do a lot of buying or selling because the whole concept of a manager is that they're going to beat the underlying index by buying the stocks that they perceive will go up and selling the stocks they think are going to go down. You know, some of these funds have turnovers of 100 to 500 percent. In other words, they buy and sell stocks almost daily. Now, I don't care how much money you have, there's still commissions charged. And commissions are low now, but they add up over time. And a lot of times they're selling stocks at a gain and they're selling stocks at a loss. The ones you sell at a gain, the IRS makes the mutual fund owner pay the taxes every year, even though they're, they're still long the entire investment. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah. No, it's and a good example of that is back, I remember when I started my career back in the early 2000s, is you had all these huge gains that the mutual fund took, but by the end of the year, the market had gone down and people actually lost money for the year, but because the manager had taken big profits earlier in the year, you had a loss on your fund, but you still had a major tax bill to pay. And I can remember how angry clients were because it's like, how did I lose money on this investment and I still had to pay taxes? Yeah. And it's just amazing when you look at the compounding of money that doesn't go to the IRS, that doesn't go to the investment advisor's pocket, that goes into your pocket, you make a lot more money. And you know, money compounds at a much higher level the more money you have. So it's really a big headwind to own a mutual fund. And I find hardly any mutual funds outperform their cheaper versions over time. Matter of fact, over the last 15 years, right, less than 19% of these managers were able to show a positive return over their underlying index when you net out fees and taxes. Are they lucky or smart? <laughs> well, I'd rather be lucky than good in life. And I have to think that with those kind of odds, it has to be luck, which also brings us to kind of our next point here is just that because mutual funds, you know, if we agree for the most part, they're more expensive. You can mm -hmm. buy some that are actual indexes. Less tax efficient though, because again, if the manager is buying and selling and you're going to have a big tax bill at the end of the year, you can't really control that. The question becomes, then how the heck do I invest my money, Bob, if mutual funds are not the place to be anymore, if we can agree you know, on those points? Well, we find it very simple, son. When it comes to investing in equities, there are low cost index funds that give you the broad exposure 
to the entire asset class that you're trying to invest in. Now, when I talk about index funds, I'm not just talking about the S&P 500. Everybody thinks the S&P 500 is the market. It's 500 stocks. Give me a guess, Ry. How many publicly traded stocks can an individual investor invest in today? I'm going to say there's probably over 10,000 publicly traded companies globally. Now, if you have the opportunity to invest in 10,000 stocks versus 500, what are the chances you're going to have next year's winner if you limit your portfolio to 500 companies versus 10,000? I'd like to have my odds on the 10,000 companies, and that's, that's really where diversification comes in versus the 500, Bob. So that's why it's so critical, Rye, to have every index, you know, every market in your portfolio, not just the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones 30, because you want to have the opportunity to have that next big winner, because no one knows what that winner is going to be. But I do know one thing. I know you and I and our clients are going to own it. I just that's won't right. be able to tell you what that next big winner is until next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Till after the fact, it's that's usually the uh, the case. And, and you know, just to mention too, it's it's about the structure. So it's about owning the passive market in an index, and you've probably heard that term before. But it's also owning it not in a mutual fund form, but what we call an exchange traded fund form or ETF, which you've probably heard that term. So you know, if you're looking at your portfolio right now, it's a good time to look at. Do I have mutual funds? What is the cost on those mutual funds? And is there a better, really uh, comparable portfolio that I should have my money in that's lower cost, more tax efficient, and better performing? The biggest area of risk right now is in bond mutual funds, Ryan. You talk about that every week. But if you would like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified, all you need to do is be one of our next 10 callers. If you've saved over 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. This means all of your account numbers, passwords, and security questions for every bank account, every brokerage firm, every insurance policy, every credit card, even your mortgage, virtually everything with a statement and online access, simplified and organized into one financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? If something happened to you, think how easy it will be for your children or your spouse to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs in a worst case scenario. If you're one of our next 10 callers, here's what we're going to do for you. We'll have our CPA partner review your taxes and ensure that you are utilizing every tax benefit available. Our estate planning partner will make sure that your estate is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we'll analyze all of your investment accounts and run for you our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple, three-page document that breaks down your portfolio to the three critical elements of a successful investment strategy. Diversification, fees, and income. We want to make certain that you're not being overcharged in your fees by those hidden costs buried deep in the prospectus of your mutual fund or in those thick annuity contracts. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one 360 financial portal that will give you a window into your financial future. Your wealth projection will update daily in real time and answer that age-old question, not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. Will you outlive your money, or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that our family has been perfecting now for over four decades. So don't waste time. Give us a call now for a full review at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, and you're one of the next 10 callers at 844 plan NYC 844-752-6692, a full financial review, a real financial plan at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised decisions. Bob, what out there in the media did you find that was so egregious that you wanted to talk about it today on Financial Pornography of the Week? You know, Ryan, I want to make a blanket statement. Financial pornography right. I'm ready. is not about investing. It's about trading. And one of the worst things that these sites do is they try to take something that's very complex, 
that's very intricate and make it simple and create these simple slogans that can be disastrous to your financial future. Oh, yeah. And the biggest one, the biggest one that comes to mind is sell in May and go away. What does that mean, sell in May and go away? Where are you supposed to go? <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you sell your portfolio out and then you're off to Europe for the summer is the way that, that that's the way I visualize it anyway. All right. Now, do you, have, do you remember where the market was this past May? I have. To, it's already a blur. I mean, it was only a couple months ago, but I, I can't even remember. I know it was lower than it is today because we've hit record highs in the last two weeks. Yeah. How about 3,000 points lower? Now, you wow. sold all of your investments. You now have to pay the, the government huge gains, capital gains taxes. You're sitting in cash. The market's 3,000 points higher. You haven't made any dividends. Your cash has yielded zero. You're going to tell me now you're going to go in and buy your portfolio back because tomorrow, you know, it's November, the first week of November this week, and it's now time to get back in? <laughs> well, that you know, that brings up a really, it's an old misconception, you know, of that seasonality in the markets. You know, I, I've, I actually had clients call me this week and say, well, October is one of the weakest months in the market. I and mean, this is the time the market always turns, right? And, <laughs> I, and I always say, flip a coin. <laughs> that's your odds, right? The selling exactly. may go away. It's, you might as well flip a coin, but that's a great point. I mean, it's, and it's, it's one of these things that's taken as truth. Like, obviously, you sell in May, and obviously, you come back from your trips from Europe and you invest again. <laughs> Well, what if you can't afford to go to Europe? What if you have a day job? I mean, how, how are you supposed to go to Europe when you're supposed to be working every day? And when are you supposed to pay attention to these things? The whole point is having a diversified portfolio means that some things are working, some things aren't. For example, growth stocks are going through the roof this year. I feel like it's, you know, 1999 all over again with Amazon <laughs> and Google and, and stocks of that ilk, you know, going up on a daily basis where value stocks – now, even though they're up this year, a little bit out of favor. So there's always an opportunity for a place to invest your money where it's going to pay you handsomely in the future. Never found anyone who is an all or none investor where that ever works. You know, people, especially individual investors, when it comes to timing the market, Rye, how successful are they? Well, they're not. And I think, you know, the other thing that gets forgotten, and a lot of this is a problem with a lot of the annuities that you own, because you can mm -hmm. own the market and it doesn't pay what you call dividends. Dividends pay out every quarter. So if you're out of the market for a couple months on vacation or you're selling in October or whatever kind of market timing that you're doing, you are missing out on dividend payments. And if you look at it over the long term, 40% of your return, almost half, has nothing with the stock market going up or down. It's those dividends that you're collecting quarter after quarter, which is another reason, Bob, why it's so detrimental to try to be in and out of the market because you're missing those fat dividend payments that come in every single quarter, like clockwork. Well, I think financial pornography is the biggest reason why the average investor has underperformed in their portfolio over the last 20 years. The average return has been, what return, Ryan? What would you guess the average investor has made over the last 20 years? I'm going to guess it's somewhere, it's going to be low because of the reason people try, you know, we try to sell in and out of the market. I'm going to say, Bob, it's like a 3% return, a little bit better than cash. Well, you're very generous. It's only two. Ouch. And Ouch. guess what, Rye? If they had invested in any other asset class and never looked, they would have made three times or 300% more, no matter what they invested in, had they not paid attention and tried to avoid the downside by selling and panicking you know, with every dip in the market. So it's almost like buy in May and then go away for like 10 years and come back. <laughs> it's That's a better strategy. Buy every day and go away, right? And, <laughs> and then enjoy a phenomenal retirement. That's a great idea. That's the pain capital management way. I like it. And more bad news, Bob, for the retail investor, more bad news for us as investors. I found another article this week that points out another danger in investing. And you, you're hearing a lot right now about Puerto Rico bonds. And they've done, oh. obviously, very poorly because of bankruptcy. And now you've had these terrible hurricanes that went through. It's just been bad oh. news after bad news. And a lot of the wow. headlines are about how these hedge funds have gone in and bought some of this debt and now they're getting hit. But the reality of it is two-thirds of all Puerto Rican debt is owned by you and me, the retail investor who own it either outright or, and what we don't like more than anything else, is municipal bond funds. And this is one of the reasons why we don't like bond funds. So what comes to light here is some of the, the most risky paper out there is in a lot of these bond funds that you own. And the real tragedy of this, Bob, 
is with all the retail holders or people like you and me that own these things is the reason why we buy bond mutual funds is for safety and security. And now all of a sudden you've got the risk of owning you know, Apple stock or some other kind of market investment that you didn't think you were invested in. Well, you know, Ry, I think that the uh, what I just read recently is that these mutual funds finally bit the bullet and sold these Puerto Rico bonds at a third of what they paid for them. So they're no longer holders, but the bond fund investors are holding the bag. And this is just one of the reasons why it's so important to know what you own, know why you own it, what is it, how does it fit into the context of a long-term plan that's not about market timing, but time in the market. And if you want a plan that looks like that, that's a real plan, here's your shot to do it. We have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do a 360 review of all your assets. We'll build you a portal where you can look at everything in one place. That means all those insurance policies. That means those 401ks, those IRAs, brokerage accounts you have. We'll load it all up, build a customized portal so you can see everything and we can analyze everything to make sure that you have yourself financially organized. We'll have you at a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. And we're going to look at all your investments on a simple three-page document, our investment analysis spreadsheet, and look at all the critical areas of your portfolio. Number one, we're going to look at diversification. How well are you diversified over all your accounts? What pitfalls or risks do you have in your portfolio? Do you own risky bond funds? We're going to point it out for you. We're going to look at fees. Do you own a lot of high-cost annuities, a lot of high-cost mutual funds? We're going to break down all the costs, including the hidden costs, to help you reduce the fees on your portfolio. And finally, we're going to look at cash flow or income. How much income does your portfolio produce? Bob and I are going to show you how to increase or optimize it so it's retirement ready. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, build you a 360 portal so you can see everything and determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, we have a few slots left, so give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own Total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Your personalized path to financial freedom awaits at Payne Capital Management. For more information, go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne. No pain, no gain. Every weekend here for you, giving you the best financial advice. And to keep in line with our goal of education, we want to make sure that you are retirement ready. If you're in retirement, you're making those best decisions, cutting through the noise in terms of the information that's out there. So we put together our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you'd like to get a free copy of our newest guide, simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888, and you'll get all the latest information on the truth about taxes and retirement. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888, and you can get the latest information on taxes and retirement, how not to make your IRA and IOU to the IRS. Text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. And if you want to know more about myself and Bob, and more importantly, figure out if Bob's hair is real, you can check us out at bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And you can learn a little more about Pain Capital and what Bob and I do here. And if you ever have a burning question you want to ask Bob or I, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions 
at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. Bob, the first question comes in from Beth. She's in Rye, New York. She writes in, Bob, my IRA seems like it's bouncing up and down every single day. And the roller coaster drives me crazy. Does that mean it's time to get out of the market and invest a little differently? Well, I'll tell you what, Beth, you know, it sounds like to me that you need to get away from whoever is advising you on that portfolio. This has been one of the least volatile years in my history, and I've been doing this for over 42 years. Low inflation, low interest rates. We have a stock market that hasn't corrected more than 5%. There's only been five in history where you've had a year where the market didn't correct 5%. So if your IRA is a roller coaster, sounds like somebody might be doing a lot of trading in your account or somebody's hitting you with a lot of fees. But this would be very concerning for me because this has been anything but a roller coaster. This has been a rocket ship, you know, right up to the right up to the sky. So I'm very concerned, Beth, and I think you really need to give us a call. What do you think, Rye? Well, I think also, you know, what is that account supposed to be doing? And this is one of the reasons why you know I love our 360 portal because then you can look at maybe that IRA should be riskier because it's longer term money and maybe have safer money in one of your other accounts that you're building for retirement. It, it's really in context of how all your accounts are either working together or not working together. And how do you really know that if you have lots of different accounts, maybe different brokers that are advising you to do different things so you think you're diversified? And this goes back to, again, what we've talked about a lot today, and that's just having a concerted plan. And once you have that concerted plan of where you're going, and where you're going is anything from like, hey, when am I retiring? How much money am I going to need? Then to determining how do you build a portfolio that helps you achieve that. So Bob, I you know this could stay a risky portfolio, but I have no idea what that means with regards to all of Beth's other assets. Yeah, very good point, Rye. And uh, you know, like every week, we get a lot of great email questions. And Rye, what else is in the mailbag this week? Bob, Annie in Princeton writes in: Most of my 401k is invested in company stock. Is that bad? I'm going to throw this one back to you, Bob, because. You know, you worked for Merrill Lynch for, what, almost uh, 30 years? 25 years? You know, years? They, they were going to name it Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Payne. I was there that long. <laughs> I don't remember that being in the, in the history books, but I believe it. And you actually had a significant percentage of your net worth in Merrill Lynch stock, and Merrill Lynch stock did exceptionally well over your career there when you were at Mother Merrill, as they used to call it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, son. That was uh, one of the best investments I had ever made. because a lot of stock was given to me. I had an opportunity to buy stock low. And so, you know, I was given stock, I bought stock, I had stock in my personal account, I had Merrill Lynch stock in my 401k. And I didn't think there was a problem with that because, you know, look at Merrill Lynch, it was a great company, 100-year-old company. We always said, if, if Merrill Lynch goes under, the country's going under. So why would I ever worry about it? Now, thank goodness that I was smart enough to have an advisor because I don't care how smart you are, I don't care how well-educated you are. If you don't have an advisor, you have a fool for a client. And you know what, son? You were my advisor. And thanks, (laughs) thankfully, when you took over my account, you saved my financial life. Bob, I'll take all the credit for that, which means I should get a larger percentage of the inheritance. But we can talk about that offline. Um, But I I think the point is here, you you worked at Merrill Lynch. You were a big part of Merrill Lynch. And so was I worked at Merrill Lynch as well. It was a great company. And the stock did really well for a long time. But then in the matter of six months, literally the stock basically went bankrupt. Bank of America bought it for almost nothing. And you know, you and I were close to the company. We had no idea that was going to happen, but eventually we followed the advice that we give, and that's making sure that we diversify no matter how much we love the company we work for or a company that's been very good to us for a long time in terms of stock performance. So true, Rye. I mean, it's um, when you over-concentrate a position, you know, only one of two things can happen. You're going to be very happy or you're going to be very depressed. And why take the risk of being very depressed? I mean, I had all the money I ever needed you know, to achieve every financial goal. I just wasn't diversified and was too blind to the fact that I was taking that type of enormous risk. And I'll never forget the time you called me. I was coming out of a meeting and you said, Dad, let me get this straight. We have a strategy where we diversify our clients' portfolios across asset classes, within asset classes, with the least amount of risk and the highest probability of success. And I say, that's right, son. You got it absolutely right. And this applies to everybody in the country, everybody in the world, except for you. 
And I said, what? <laughs> he said, this applies to everybody in the world except for you because you've got 100% of your money in one stock. And of course, just like a typical investor, what I'd say to you, Ray? You said, well, the stock's done great. All the same reasons, the rationale that we, we hear you say when you have a concentrated stock position, when you were saying the same thing like any other client would say. Sure. It was an irrational reaction, right? I have low cost bases. My average cost is 25 cents a share. I've got to pay all these capital gains taxes. The dividend goes up every year. It's a fabulous company. I've been with this company all my life. It's my family. It's my life. And you said, all right, let me get this straight. We have a strategy that applies to everybody in the world except for you. <laughs> And um, thankfully for that moment in time, I'll never forget it. I had that aha moment. We liquidated every share, some as high as $96 a share. And I'll remember the next print on the stock. It was two bucks. It was the Woo. scariest thing I've ever seen. That hurts. Um, so I, I discussed it with, while you were speaking, Ry, Just I sent a text to your sister and brother about giving a bigger share of the inheritance and, and you're going to have to take it up with them. They're not voting in your favor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm out of luck. Now, if so you'd you like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified and eliminate losing all your money in some high-risk investment, all you need to do is be one of our next 10 callers. If you have saved over $200,000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. This means all of your accounts, all of your bank accounts, insurance companies, insurance policies, credit cards, even your mortgage, virtually everything with a statement and online access, simplified organized into one financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? Well, if you're one of our next few callers, here's exactly what you can expect from us. Our CPA partner will review your taxes and ensure you're utilizing every tax benefit legally available. Our estate planning partner will make sure that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we'll analyze all of your investments and run for you our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. Simple three-page document that breaks down your portfolio to the three critical elements of a successful investment strategy. Diversification, fees, and income. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one 360 financial portal that will give you and your family a window into your financial future. Your wealth projection will update daily in real time and answer that age-old question, not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. Will you outlive your money? or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies our family has perfected now for over 40 years. We wanna help you take your family from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time, we have a couple slots left. 844-PLAN-NYC, that's 844-752-6600. 92 if you have over $200,000 safe for retirement be one of the next few callers at 844 plan NYC that's 844 752 6692 we'll put together a full financial portal so you can look at everything in one place at 844 plan NYC that's 844 752 6692 this is no pain no gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I always want to make sure you're getting the best advice, most practical, pragmatic advice when it comes to making decisions about your finances. And our latest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the government inherit your IRA? You can access for free if you text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS, so feel free to download our latest guide by texting the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's, again, the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. And it's time for our spotlight segment, my favorite segment. Each week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan and uncover the flaws or what we call pain points. And that's pain spelled P-A-Y-N-E for the record. So you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And today we have a very special guest, my more handsome, smarter brother, Chris Payne one of the star financial advisors here at Payne Capital. 
Chris, thanks for being on the show, brother. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Ryan. Everything you just said is absolutely true. <laughs> Wait, I thought you Chris, were the looks and I was the brains. Rye tried to uh, steal your inheritance earlier in the show today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you're still the more handsome, smarter brother, so keep that in mind, even if I get more of the inheritance. Well, bro, as you know, flattery gets you everywhere with me. <laughs> true, true. Flattery <laughs> is the way to your heart. Uh, so you worked on a case today. Why don't you give Bob and I and our listeners the rundown? Sure. So this is a, a really interesting case. This is actually a referral from some clients of mine down in Florida. This is a couple in their late 50s looking to retire in about 10 years. So, you know, first thing we did was we sat down and ran through a wealth projection for them. And, you know, based on the income that they're getting today and what they put away, you know, they really don't need to take a lot of risk to reach their their retirement goals or, you know, in other words, to be financially independent. What I found most interesting about this case was how they were invested. So this is something I actually learned a lot about while I was analyzing this portfolio. And what I found was that all their money is invested in one single fund. And the interesting thing about this fund is that it's a closed end fund. So that means one thing I found very interesting is the fact that it's it's highly leveraged. So it's about 20% leveraged. Um, So that means, Chris, just um, for the layman like myself, is basically they're borrowing against the money inside the portfolio to buy even more shares. It's like taking a home equity loan on your house to buy another house. Exactly. So why is that important? It's important because if you think about what happened back in 2008, you know, on average, I think most markets were down about 40% in the US. That's right. This fund was down close to 60% in 2008. So 20% more than the market just because they were taking that extra risk with the leverage. And that's the old saying, right? Leverage is great on the upside when things are going up, but it hurts you doubly almost on the downside. So, right, the market was down 40. This is down 60%. Ouch. Exactly. So this portfolio is completely inappropriate for them considering you know where they are in life, where they are in re- relation to their goals. They really don't need to be taking this much risk. The other thing that I found very interesting, and, and they really were really happy about this, was the fact that every year this fund is guaranteeing that they're going to get a 10% dividend. Well, so That sounds pretty high to me, given the fact that I'm getting about 1% on my money market fund. How are they doing that? 10% just sounds completely unrealistic. That's a great question, Ryan. You know what? I had the same question. So I went back and did some research on this fund, and what I found out was that that 10% is not actually a dividend. It's a distribution. So Hmm. it wasn't necessarily income that they were getting paid. And when I went back and looked at the history of what was getting paid out, the smallest amount that was actually getting paid out was actually income. So in some years, they were taking gains. Uh, In other years, like for example, in this year, in 2017, they were actually just getting a return of their original investment or what they call a return of capital. So in reality, when I actually went and did the actual analysis of the portfolio, this particular fund was only generating about 0.38% a year in actual income. So not only is this thing risky in a down market, but it's also risky in an up market since it just dropped almost 7% over the last couple of weeks. Wow. And so, you know, sometimes these, these things are just so unexplainable. But using leverage is really for the gambler, not for the investor. Exactly. And based on the projections that we ran for these folks, they really don't need to be gambling. They really don't need this kind of risk, and they certainly don't need to be leveraged. Because I'm looking at, you ran them a wealth projection, Chris, which looks great here. I see how you loaded everything into this personalized portal for them so we could look at all the investments. And then you looked at, okay, you know, how much money they need to retire? How can they retire comfortably? How, How are they not going to run out of money in retirement? And based on the numbers you ran here, it looks like they can get away with a very, very conservative return. They don't need a 10% return. And the investment they have is not even giving them a real 10% return. There's almost a kind of a false sense of security with the income that's coming in because it's not real. Exactly. So Chris, did they know that they were taking, did, did they know that this investment was leveraged or they just saw the 10% and thought it sounded great? They really just saw the 10% and they thought it sounded great. They really didn't understand that uh, where the 10% was actually coming from and really the downside risk of this fund. It's you know, great. that's the thing. You can't judge a book by its cover when it comes to investments. And I think a lot of times what you should do when you see an investment that's yielding more than your hat size, you know, that's when, you know, the red flags just start to go up. Because just think about it as an individual. If you're, Chris, if you were to go out to borrow today, if you were buying a new home in Philly, for example, or in New York, and you took out a mortgage, what rate would you have to pay on that mortgage to satisfy the bank today? You know, no more than 4%. So when someone comes to you with an investment that's yielding more than 4%, you know, someone's going to pay you 10, which means basically they're borrowing from you at 10%. 
I think the first question you have to ask, if I can get a mortgage at four, if I can borrow at four personally, why do they have to borrow money from me at 10? That would be a huge red flag for me and would make me want to really find out what's behind that curtain or, you know, take that book and open it and, and find out why on the cover it's telling me 10 when that seems a lot higher than any normal person would have to borrow at. And that's really what it comes down to. When you see an investment paying a lot of yield, if it's a lot of yield and you're you're able to borrow at a lot less, that just tells you how much risk is inherent in that underlying portfolio. And unfortunately, risk is something that we recognize in hindsight, isn't it, Chris? Absolutely. And you know, it goes back to the old adage, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And especially when it comes to your investments, if you see something you think is too good to be true, you know, you really should take a second look at it and really analyze, okay, where is this really coming from? That's How a Bob Payne 101, Chris. Um, if, it, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is, and a good rule of thumb with investing in general. Well, great job in this case, Chris. Great being able to analyze everything in one place and really break down the investments that this couple own, because in this case, a 60% decline on their investment would be disastrous for their retirement. And if you're thinking the same thing right now, I need to know what's in my portfolio. I need to understand you know, what risks that I actually have and those underlying investments. Here's your shot to do it. We have a few slots left. There's one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, and Chris will build for you your own personal 360 financial portal. We'll look at everything in one place. We'll run all the analytics on all your investments. We'll break everything out for you on a simple three-page spreadsheet like we did for this couple. And we're going to look at diversification and underlying risk. What kind of funds do you have in your portfolio? Are you taking too much risk? We're going to look at fees. Do you have expensive investments in your portfolio? What are you really paying on your portfolio? We're going to show you how to reduce the cost. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We want to make sure that you have an income stream coming in. We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio with real income, not a fake 10% like this investment. And then we're going to tie it all together, put everything into your own 360 financial portal, and determine is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk in the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- 752-6692. Well, great show, gentlemen. And Chris, again, I can't emphasize enough how fantastic it is to have the more handsome, the smarter pain on the show. Well, Ryan, congratulations. You're still in my will, and it's always a pleasure <laughs> to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's turning out so well for me today. Big Bob, what's uh, on tap for the rest of the weekend? Well, as soon as I sign off here today, son, I'm going to give your sister a call and see if I can get the smartest pain to join no pain, no gain, <laughs> financial planning. Then we'd really be cooking and then be a real all pain show. Have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.